Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our uh, December roundtable. I'm very excited that we're able to, to do this. It's been a long weekend for the commissioners who are attending tonight, but I want to thank them for their participation in the College of Commissioner Science over the weekend. Our opening this evening is a little bit different. Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. The Scout Law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Outdoor Code. As an American, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor manners, be careful with fire, be considerate in the outdoors, and be conservation-minded. From on board the International Space Station, happy 110th birthday, Boy Scouts of America. That was cool. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. So we're going to... Uh, and from that to uh, council updates from Greg. We can't hear you, Greg. Now you can, I hope. Now I can. <laughs> okay, uh, January 1st uh, at the Thunderbirds. Uh, come on out with your family, friends. Uh, $17 for everybody, and there's open skate time. Bring your own skates. Uh, information's on the calendar. And the next page. It's not in I jump on that while you're there. Just wanted to add that for the uh, hockey game, there is an opportunity uh, for adults to get a free ticket if you're willing to man a information table for that event. Um, actually, uh, an adult would get two tickets. Just make sure that we use all youth protection, um, that we have four tables in the lobby, that we would have information for scouting and uh, perhaps vending some excess popcorn. Excellent. So some of the upcoming events, uh, I think the other people are here to talk about, so I won't spend much time talking about the elective blasts, um, but WOE is uh, taking this month off. We'll be back in January. Uh, look for information on the calendar as well. The Ice Fishing Committee has a fun family uh, event planned in Plainfield, Saturday, January 22nd, just $5 a person for uh, some bait and equipment and help. They'll be there to lead people along or people can just come on up and fish on their own. Uh, Craig Mannix is the point of contact for that. Um, I believe Crystal's here to talk about the Scout uh, hike a rama uh, a little bit in Metacomet. So I'll leave that for a little bit later, but there's information on the calendar about that new event. Order of the Arrow is going to have their winter fellowship at the end of January. So if you missed the fall fellowship, this is your opportunity. You missed the alligator, which was delicious, but the theme of the winter fellowship will be summer. So if you have the winter blues, come on out and uh, participate in that event. And the uh, Metacomet Klondike Derby also is being finalized right now for February 12th. Uh, summer camp, some really exciting stuff. The dates are up on the calendar already, and we have opened up registration for about a month now. We already have one third of our units that attended in 2021 have committed to coming back next year. Um, that means for those individuals, they've saved just shy of $6,000 off the early bird rate for the scouts that participate uh, for what they put in. We, they filled 42% of our camp capacity for next summer already, and we're already at 57% of our budgeted attendance. So really exciting things coming for summer camp 2022. It's not too late to sign up and get your, your uh, commitments in. What we're asking for is a $100 campsite deposit for units for resident camp and put in our estimated youth and adult numbers so that um, we don't overcommit um, our weeks to our capacity. Uh, you can contact me for more information about that. NOAC 20, 
22. I just put an announcement out. I understand the link did not work for some reason, um, but we want to thank the, the list of growing list of adults that are already supporting this event locally uh, the, in the regional uh, capacity and on staff. Uh, the Lodge still has opportunities for uh, many scouts to, uh, to sign up and adults to join as well. So you can find information online at the link on the page there, um, or just Google uh, BSA OA NOAC and you find that information. Uh, training coming up, Trainer's Edge it newly announced. It's gonna be Saturday, January 22nd at the Epicenter uh, classroom upstairs. Uh, very important for folks that would be participating in the Wood Badge class um, as staff, but also anybody wants to learn more about some basic training skills, it's a great, um, it's really the second class, but it's still a good introduction to uh, um, improving your, your training presentation skills and also um, appropriate for some of your older scouts to participate. So information on the calendar, IOLS uh, just added to the calendar as well, April 23rd through the 24th. Um, you can't register yet, but that'll be coming soon. So uh, a lot of folks are trying to get that for they're all in for scouting um, uh, uh, rebates and uh, to, to get their, their, stat and their volunteers fully trained at the Scouts BSA level. And very soon we expect uh, some information for pricing and such to come forward for Mary Benjamin's Wood Badge class in the fall of 2022. So uh, share that information, look for that on the website. Online training we've talked about before, uh, but it's, this is the last uh, Appalachian Trail online training series opportunity coming up for Cubmaster specific. That course is also available at my.scouting.org along with many other courses, but this is sort of that hybrid opportunity to be online, but to be able to interact with people. So look for that. And if you have noticed that a training you've taken is not on your record, please contact Lindsay Broder or myself. And uh, once we get just a little bit of specifics, we'll be able to add that onto your record for you. Um, ways to get involved. We've talked about the district committees before. Uh, the next council coordinated committee meeting is the 16th of this month. Um, and that is, again, for anybody working in district operations, fund development, membership, and all program initiatives at the council level and district level. So if you're running, chairing an activity, this is a meeting for you to come together. Um, and part of that, we're excited to welcome Joe Longo as our ch chair of the Outdoor Programs Committee, which will oversee uh, summer camp, the uh, things such as, as woe and ATV and, and shooting sports and such. So uh, look for many of you to join us on the 16th of December. And then the trading post and service center, uh, the regular hours have not changed, but we wanna remind you that you can order online or call and we'll bring stuff up to woe, but that won't happen till January now. Um, we are closed. December 24th through the 30th. And just below that, it just tells you we're closing one hour early on the 31st so we can get uh, things into the banks and such before the end of the year. And uh, we'll be closed on January 1st. So during those, um, the week after the Christmas break there, although the store is closed uh, for inventory, if you do have charter needs and stuff, you can call in advance. Uh, we will be there, just we're not able to open the store for sales. Art, did I miss anything about the store there? Uh, no, um, but there was one uh, other change and it was late breaking, so you weren't aware of it. Um, General Knox has uh, delayed their uh, December meeting one week. Um, it's going to be taking place on the 15th, um, so the third Wednesday, um, and that's just for the month of December due to some scheduling conflicts with both Fritz and David. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Greg. Um, before I uh, forget, in November, we had our first in-person round table up at Moses uh, in conjunction with Woe. And I did not see a lot of you there. So if you would please uh, just message me within chat or just put into chat 
the reason why you did not go to uh, the in-person roundtable, I don't know if it was an inconvenient date or, or, or what happened, um, but we would, as the roundtable team, would like to address that and really be able to meet your needs. So uh, if you could let us know why you didn't make it to roundtable in November, that would be helpful for us with the planning. Okay, uh, next up is our Council Commissioner Joshua. Good evening, everybody. Great to see everybody here. Uh, obviously, because it is December and it is the most wonderful time of the year, that means that we are in the midst of charter renewal. Uh, charter renewal should be wrapping up at this point in time. Uh, but if you do still have any questions about rechartering, uh, please feel free to reach out to I, myself, to your district commissioner. Uh, first point of contact should be your unit commissioner. Uh, but just very quickly, if anybody is not aware, of course, everything is online this year and it, it's uh, in a different format than it was last year. The easiest way to access your online rechartering is to go to my.scouting.org, then go to BSA web links, and it, there you will find internet advancement 2.0. In order to do your uh, recharter, you have to go to internet advancement this year. So uh, as a unit leader, uh, I have been through the process. It is relatively painless um, as compared to uh, previous experiences. But as always, if anybody has any questions or needs any help, the commissioners are here and ready and willing to assist in any way that we can. Thank you, Ellie. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Oh. Okay. Um, district updates. Anything from Appalachian Trail? Yes, not. No, I don't have anything, Ellie. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> Sorry. Um, General Knox, um, Lynn, did you want to speak to the um, announcement that Greg had made earlier? Yes, I could use some volunteers uh, for that day. The sessions are 50 minutes uh, long, so it's not like I know when Art sent it out, he, he made it easy to volunteer either morning or afternoon. Um, the sessions are very easy. They're for Cub Scouts. Um, I kind of pick, you know, the 10 easiest um, electives that they could do. So everything will be provided for you. Uh, I will have a Zoom meeting with the leaders uh, that, that choose to, uh, to help me out so we can, um, so I can tell them what's expected of them. But um, we're, we're really trying to uh, promote Holyoke, and, and this is, this is a, a fun thing for Cub Scouts to do. Um, it's, it's easy, it's fun, and uh, I'm hoping we get a lot of uh, PACs involved. If any questions, uh, give me a call uh, or an email. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, Fritz, I know we covered the announcement that you had wanted to make. Was, were there any other announcements from General Knox? Okay, I didn't have anything. Um, and Meta Comet, uh, Crystal, uh, Greg alluded to you maybe uh, speaking out a little bit more. Um, so Meta Comet is doing a hike-a-rama. Um, it was supposed to originally be in lieu of our fall fun day, um, but we're doing a, a hike a which is uh, essentially you go on a hike um, at least a mile with your Aquilas, with your den, whoever you want to go with, your pack. Um, and the uh, participants, the scout participants get a uh, scout appropriate compass as a, a gift as well as the uh, hiking badge um, and it's also kind of meant a little bit as a recruiting um, in that I'm sorry guys I'm feeding my kids 
dinner. Um, and here, uh, the idea is that people bring their friend on the hike with them. Um, if their friend joins in uh, into their pack, then um, they can also get a special gift and a badge as well for joining. Um, and uh, it's $10 per cub to cover the cost of the badges and the gifts. Um, and then also the same thing for friends, others is zero. We have a little thing here. Um, let's see, anywhere a cub can safely hike, uh, and let's see, basically hike and report anytime before January 14th. So we're hoping to maybe, maybe recruit a little bit with this and, you know, encourage people to come and have fun and hike and get some exercise, but enjoy the, you know, the views through all this leaveless trees. So, yeah. I think that's it for that. The date again? Uh, anytime between when we put these flyers out and uh, January 14th. You just okay, need to look back on January 14th. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you, Crystal. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> um, Fritz, did you want to speak to youth protection training? Yes, thank you. I'm having some technical difficulties, but I don't think you need to see me to get the message. Um, this is the time of year that people finally realize that if they don't take youth protection training, they're not going to be able to recharter and their units are not going to be able to finish the rechartering process. So um, there are a, a few people who have not renewed their uh, youth protection yet. And I'm guessing that some of those people are probably not active in scouting any longer, but every uh, member of the key three has access to that information uh, by going to um, my.scouting.org and looking at their unit and their training information, and they can see for themselves who needs to take the training uh, so that the recharter process is not interrupted. Um, and, uh, you know, just a, a reminder, we're not doing this for the charter reprocess. We're doing this for the youth and to help keep them safe. And so we all know what the rules are uh, and can help other people obey the rules as well. So please be conscientious in getting your uh, youth protection training updated, whether it's uh, mid-December or mid-April. Uh, whenever it falls due, uh, you should be aware of when that is and take the training, it's uh, beneficial, it changes a little bit, they tweak it all the time to make it better and more informative. So, so please keep that up to date. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Um, Cheryl, did you have anything you wanted to share on membership? Thank you, Ellie, yes. Just a reminder to everyone that now is a wonderful time to be recruiting get you know, between sports seasons for some of most of our kids, get them involved so that they can participate in all of the winter events. I think the idea of having that hike activity also serve as a recruitment event is wonderful. One reminder, best to recruit in public. Make sure that people can see you, that you're active and that your activities are out you know, in a town park or common or a public space so those passing by have the opportunity to join in and make sure that your applications processed submitted to the office quickly so your cubs are covered by insurance and ready to participate thank you ellie thanks okay um art did you have anything you wanted to share regarding fundraising popcorn uh, certainly uh i guess uh, where to start um <clears throat> uh, the popcorn uh, sale has uh, ended, uh, just a little bit of cleanup left across the council. Um, the sale uh, grossed $138,000. Um, it was looking to uh, raise $200,000, so a little short of uh, what we had set out to do. 
those units who participated did a fantastic job. Um, the uh, issue was there weren't enough units participating. We had 30 units um, selling popcorn and we probably needed closer to 60. Um, so uh, again, hopefully folks can make sure to work in their plans for next year um, to participate in the popcorn sale. Um, again, even those who uh, participated did a terrific job because um, many of the show and sell sites they had planned had gotten closed down because of the surge that happened in uh, August and September. So um, those units really worked hard and really did a great job. Um, certainly, um, we had um, three scouts um, in the council um, earn a uh, top selling uh, category for selling over $3,000 each. Um, those are published in the uh, weekly uh, e-blast. So um, that's on popcorn. Um, there is some residual popcorn um, at this point in time um, is available for two thirds of the original price. If anyone wants to uh, take that, bring it to any holiday fairs or anything that's going on, you still can uh, make some money with the uh, popcorn. Um, again, the way it works now is that it sells for two thirds of the original price and then it's yours. Uh, no commissions, no prizes, just, uh, you know, it's your popcorn. Um, so uh, that's available, have almost all the flavors. Um, I think one flavor is sold out. Uh, the uh, 2021 Friends of Scouting. Um, we had said that uh, we were waiting this year um, to order patches based on uh, those who participated in Friends of Scouting because we really didn't know how that was gonna go this year. Um, so again, the 2021 um, patches um, have been ordered and received. Um, so those are uh, going out this week. Um, so folks should get those uh, next week or certainly uh, before the holiday. Um, again, those who qualified um, for the $99 and up, um, some folks qualified for multiple patches. Um, again, those are expected to be in the mail to you at the end of this week. Uh, with that, the 2022 uh, campaign is now open. Um, you can sign up online for a uh, 2022 Friends of Scouting unit presentation. Um, you also can make uh, gifts directly for 2022 um, online. And lastly, um, we have the blitz sale of the uh, pancakes, waffles, and syrup, as well as pumpkin cookies and chocolate chip cookies and brownies. Um, uh, so if folks need some holiday treats, um, it's a good uh, idea to uh, use the scouting materials to raise a little bit of dollars and have uh, that fun as well. Um, again, packages can also be direct ship for relatives and friends not in the area. Um, the final orders for that are due on December the 13th in order to have holiday delivery. Final payments are due on January 4th. Um, so I think that is all of the fundraisers. Awesome. Thank you. Ellie? Yes? I, I do have a late breaking piece of news from National that probably fits in here Great. about uh, Guide the Safe Scouting uh, update. And uh, it addresses a, a practice that is, is often used as a reward. So I'm simply the messenger, um, but I think it's important because it did come into our email this afternoon. And it's called um, Pies Are for Eating, Not for Throwing. And um, the Guide to Safe Scouting has two points, number 14 and number 15, that prohibit activities that include striking or throwing objects at one another. So instead of throwing pies at leaders as a reward for achieving a goal, like popcorn sales, uh, BSA is recommending that we eat pies and set instead. Um, hitting someone should never be a reward for achievement in scouting. Also consider the lesson being taught about uh, wasting or throwing food, not behavior we want to reinforce in scouting. If you know someone has plans to conduct the activity as a leader or parent, you should respond. You have the responsibility to stop it. So they have some recommendations of what we can do instead. Uh, I know that the when we have planned these, they certainly are not with that intention, um, but there are the two sides to that. So I'll put the rest of this in chat for everyone, um, but that's a clarification that was released today. Thank you. Um, on our agenda, the scout book and tip of the month and safety moment kind of piece was uh, had to do with rechartering 
And I think we've discussed rechartering. So thank you for the new safety tip, <laughs> the new safety moment. Um, you had put some things regarding the Order of the Arrow in chat. Is there a representative from Order of the Arrow who wants to speak further to anything? And not hearing anything, then I will go to um, our uh, presentation tonight about the peace light. And I believe that's George and Joshua who were going to. Yep. So um, I didn't put any together for a presentation. Uh, I can tell you the only thing I know, unless Josh knows something bad. Um, the peace light is scheduled to arrive at JFK um, this Saturday at Terminal 4. We can, I can look the link up and put it in the chat in a minute. Um, from 3 to 5 p.m. is a ceremony. Yeah. Then from there, the peace light makes its way across the country. Um, I don't know how many of you guys know. I think we've, we've gone over what the peace light is. There you go, Jack. Thanks. So... But basically, the peace light comes overseas from, um, not like, I want to say Austria. But um, so, and I, a little quick history on it. I want to say it's been now 10 years, maybe a little longer. Um, it didn't make it here to the U.S. It was two leaders, two scout leaders, actually, that um, organized the light to come here. Um, the light... The flame itself comes from Bless you. Um, Jesus' birthplace. Okay, so it's the, the eternal flame. So it goes on a lantern, it goes on a plane, and it was going all over. Actually, it goes by mule to the airport and so forth, and then around the country. But until about 10 years ago or so, it was two scout leaders that got to come here to the U.S. And it's fascinating that a lot of us don't know that because you know, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, BSA had a huge part in this and, you know, a couple of leaders. And then from there, the flame gets disseminated across our country. So what's that mean is that, you know, if you have a lantern, a candle, what have you, there's a process. It's, I think it was a North America Peace Light. It was a website.org that you can talk about building your own transport, a lantern in your car. Um, I just use an old, you know, trail. There you go. Josh holding his up. I, I have something similar. Um, and basically lamp oil and you go gather the light. Like I, a couple of times, I think last year or a year plus, I met with Josh at Moses and there's a little ceremony. He passes the flame to me and then I bring it back to, you know, our community here in Brimfield. And then, you know, the church holds a ceremony and other churches from around and people in their home come and they get the light and it's become a tradition where you keep the light burning in your home throughout the holiday season. Um, I think Josh is an overachiever in our group. He's had the flame going for quite a while, right? If I'm not mistaken. So even though the like, even though, like, last year, the flame didn't make it here to the U.S., that's why um, Josh has the flame. He's had it for a while, so if anyone wants the flame, I'm sure we could set something up, maybe a one-time meeting at Moses or somewhere as, you know, easy for Josh and, um, you know, pass the flame around. In the last few years at Roundtable, we've brought the flame. Some of you brought your lanterns and got the flame, but, of course, we're virtual, so it's kind of hard to pass it to you, so... Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. If there is, on, I think it's North America Peace Light on Facebook. They have their own page. There used to be a map. Um, and a lot of people will post, like, where the light's going, you know. Or if you just post, hey, I really like the light. I'm um, at so-and-so. Is anyone going past Springfield Mass? So a couple times that worked out. I met a few scout leaders, actually, from, I think one was Maine and one was Vermont that were going right through Sturbridge. So we just hooked up at, you know, like the Cracker Barrel. And we passed the light and went on. So it's another way to, you know, meet some other, you know, friends and scouting. So that's the gist of the peace light. So, yeah. So just to, just to add to what George said, you know, the, the peace light, the idea of the peace light has been around since I think 1986. And it was started by uh, the Austrian radio station. Um, and the idea of bringing it, as George said, from Bethlehem to Vienna 
And then from that point, it is disseminated. And even though it's, it's something that a lot of scouts participate in, it actually is not just for scouting. It's for you know, any organization that wants to participate in it. So in terms of that coming back to us in scouting, it's a, a wonderful opportunity for some of our charter partners, uh, those of us that are chartered by a faith-based organization, uh, whether it's a church or the Knights of Columbus or whomever to kind of bring that to them as well. There, there is a Facebook page and there is a website. I put the website in the chat. It is uh, peacelightnorthamerica.org and um, they still maintain the map. If, if you are one of the uh, people who is spreading the peace light, you can add that information so that way they know uh, what's going on and, and where it has, where it's coming and going from. Uh, George mentioned that the peace light is arriving on Saturday and as of last evening that is still uh, that is still the case, uh, but um, anything could change. It was supposed to be flown into Canada uh, right after Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving, not theirs. Uh, and unfortunately that flight was canceled. So uh, it didn't fly into uh, Canada like they'd hoped. But as of right now, it is still supposed to arrive. The flight is supposed to arrive at 2.30 on Saturday and then the uh, the ceremony is supposed to take place at three o'clock. If you are interested, at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, the live stream for the ceremony taking place in Austria will be live streamed. There isn't a link yet, but if I get it before Thursday, I'll make sure that it gets um, added into the uh, the updates that get sent out on Thursday um, so that you can watch that ceremony. They did it live stream last year and it was fantastic. It, it's uh, last year it was done from Salzburg. And so uh, if you are a Sound of Music aficionado, mm -hmm. uh, then you had the opportunity to see the gorgeous inside of the uh, the cathedral in Salzburg where Maria von Trapp and Captain von Trapp got married. Uh, one of the other nice things is there, uh, because we're scouts, there's always a patch that goes with it. This is this year's patch. And this year's patch is available at uh, peacelightnorthamerica.org. Uh, it's $5. Carla Christensen is the one who will send it to you from Texas and the proceeds uh, go to the World Friendship Fund. Uh, awesome. And did I see... Um, Beth did have a hand Beth, raised. Did you have a question, Beth? Yeah, you said it's at 8 on Saturday. That has to be a.m.? Yes, 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And I will... If, it, if the information doesn't come through on Thursday, I'll figure out another way to get it to people. Thank you, Josh. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to share is when the last time we did uh, the Peace Light at an in-person round table, we had some um, tea lights and the, we, the glass jars that we yogurt comes in we were able to put the tea lights in those so you could put it in your cup holder in the car going home if you did not have a lantern. Uh, so it's a, it's a mini way of transferring the light uh, to, your, to your home. Okay, a lantern is definitely the best way, but that did work. I, I saw, sorry, Ellie, uh, I saw that Cheryl put in the chat. Uh, there was a virtual peace light ceremony last evening and uh, if you go to peacelightnorthamerica.org, peacelight uh, it is recorded so you can watch it. And uh, Rebecca and mm, the boys and I were in it. We helped pass it. Uh, but it went as far as Japan this time. So that was great. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that information. Uh, we're now going to head into breakout sessions, uh, 20 minutes. Please, Greg. 
Um, so tonight is um, the religious albums for um, the Cub Scouts. Um, I actually have Kathy the Point here, who is one of our religious emblems leaders, and she's actually going to do the presentation for us this evening. Thanks, Rebecca. You're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, let's see. If I can. working with a new computer. So let's see if this goes. Um, hmm. Okay. Wow, that's not cool. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys, I'm using a new computer and I didn't think it would be a big deal why this is not coming up. Um, that was weird. Okay, so how about if I try this without messing around and wasting time with the slideshow? I will um, get the slideshow um, to everybody. I'm just going to talk through it for right now, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, the the twelfth point of the law is scout is reverent. Um, and we try to teach our scouts that. We want to make sure that a, a scout is reverent towards God, faithful in their religious duties, and they respect the beliefs of others. That's basically, um, you know, what we want to make sure that they take away that's part of their scouting experience. And to, sometimes this is the hardest thing to explain to scouts, especially when we have more and more scouts that aren't participating in organized religion. Um, so the way that we can talk about it is just that to be reverent is to feel or to show a deep and solemn respect for something, right? So meaning that I, we, we can use other words um, like um, odd, devout, respectful, devoted, things like that, that they can understand in a different perspective that they might not be getting through organized religion. So just going through really quickly, um, we have three parts of religious uh, education and activities within scouting. I, most of you probably know we have the adventures that are required for the ranks, their duty to God adventures. And then also we have um, patch programs that are available through religious organizations. Um, the one I want to concentrate on tonight is religious emblems and I really apologize for not having, I'm not sure I was practicing and everything, why this computer isn't letting me share. So religious emblems are um, uh, programs developed by the religious organization. So they are not BSA, um, uh, appro they're approved by BSA, but they're programs that are organized and developed by the actual religious organizations. They're approved to the point that um, scouts can wear the emblems on their official uniforms, um, but the BSA doesn't update or um, run the programming. So there's a duty to God brochure. Um, you can find out a lot of information at praypub.org. Um, again, I'll put all the stuff, I'll send, make sure everybody gets the all the information, the links and everything. So the Judy to God brochure is a trifold that has pictures of all the religious emblems in it for um, everything from, uh, you know, the African um, uh, uh, Christian community to Zoroastrians. Um, 
this is what your scouts would use to discover which emblem they would want to work on. Um, and that also has a listing of all the contact information for all the faith communities. So if they are part of a religious organization that is not um, a, a Protestant or a Catholic um, faith community, then they would be able to contact that faith community directly to find out about their religious emblems. Um, like we said, uh, the scouts have a duty to God. And one way that they can show that duty to God is to, to earn their religious emblems. Um, one of the things I want to go back to is, you know, sometimes we have um, packs that are, most of our packs, you know, nowadays are mixes of different faith, um, children from different faiths. So it's not a lot of, uh, there's some Catholic sponsored um, packs, but most of the ones that we find now are mixes. But this, this duty to God is part of our scouting experience. I mean, everybody's read the Declaration of Princi Religious Principles, and every parent and every adult has signed this when they register. So this is, you know, something that um, Lord Baden-Powell said that there's not a religious side to scouting, but that scouts is based on religious principles, mainly a service to God and to others. So, so this is an important part of scouting itself. Um, you know, it's non-sectarian, meaning that it doesn't matter what organization, what faith organization scouts belong to, but, or even if they belong to a organ, an organized religion at all, but in some way that they understand and practice the values and principles that underlie most religions, right? So 10 commandments, the golden rule, all those things, most religions have those basic tenets. Um, and we wanna encourage our scouts to practice that in some way um, outside of scouting within their family. Um, so the religious emblems, once they find out um, which one they should be working on um, and they finish the emblem, we'll go back to the steps of how they actually do that. But this is, um, they receive the, men, the medal, but they also will uh, receive or, or they're allowed to wear their universal religious knot on their uniforms. And if they earn more than one medal, they put the device pins on it. Um, and this is one of the few knots that carries up to their adult uniforms. So if a, a um, scout earns a religious emblem and wears their universal religious knot, that knot moves up to their adult um, uniform. So um, we do not earn our religious emblems within a pack environment. So this is not something you're gonna work on in your pack or your den. Um, religious emblems are done at home with family. Some emblems will be worked on with a counselor. Um, and there may be some families that want to work on it together, but it's not a den or pack um, uh, activity. So, you know, because we have kids of different faiths, um, but it's also the way that most of them are, are structured are very family oriented. So for the Cubs, they'll work on them with their families. When they get to Scouts BSA, they'll be working with counselors. Um, these are opportunities for, for families to work together and get to know their clergy better, their faith organization better, their congregation, um, not to be a PAC in activity. So basically there's four steps to having a scout work on their religious emblem. First step is they find out which metal they're going to work on and they can look at the duty to God brochure and they get the booklet that is meant for that religious emblem. So um, they would need to each get, each scout, even if they work in a group, each scout needs to have their own booklet because it's basically a workbook um, and can turn into a scrapbook as they work through the activities. Um, some religions 
actually offer booklets for counselors and for um, mentors, um, but not everyone does, but there's always a booklet for the scout. So that's the first thing is to get um, their booklet to get started. After they get their booklet, and they've determined which metal they're going to be working on, and those will be age appropriate. So for each religion, you might find, so for example, in the Protestant religions, most of them will use the pray pub, um, God and Jesus and me, God and me, and there'll be uh, lions and uh, tigers will work on the first booklet. And then the second booklet would be for um, wolves and bears. The third booklet would be worked on during Weeblows and Air of Light years. Um, the last two would be after they move into middle school and high school and Scouts BSA. In um, the Catholic uh, booklets, they we have Light of Christ would be for, there's not a lion program, uh, they are actually, I have actually heard that they are working on that, but uh, there isn't one right now. Um, so tigers would work on um, light of Christ, tigers and wolves, um, and bears through Weeblows and Air of Light. So once they're a bear, they can start working on their um, second emblem. You cannot go back. So if uh, a scout did not know about religious emblems, say, and they're a bear right now, they can't go back and earn the medal that was meant for the younger grades. So they're, they have to start where they are. Um, and that, that can be a big deal because in the end, um, for, for both the Protestant and the Catholic medals, there is a medal that it, a, a special pin, a device that they can earn by earning all four. Um, now the Protestant have the, the Jesus and me, which is a new booklet for the lions and tigers, but all four, of um, two in Cub Scouts and two in BSA, Scouts BSA. Um, in the Protestant, they earned the four-star award and in the Catholic booklets, the religious emblems, they earned the, um, the pillars of faith, um, which is actually earned less often than Eagle. So this is a very rare award. Um, we were just at uh, in Springfield at the Bishop's Mass with um, uh, Scouts BSAs being awarded their uh, Adultory Day and the Pope Pius emblems. Um, and there was a handful of Scouts that also earned their Pillars of Faith. It's, it's a pretty big deal. These programs take three to six months um, working through it with their families. Um, most, you know, it just depends on how they work through it. Uh, for me, when I worked on my uh, one with my son, we um, worked on it. Uh, we set aside Sunday afternoons for an hour or two. You know, some Sundays you work on it, some Sundays you don't. So it can take three months if they work on it dil diligently. Um, uh, if not, it might take a little longer. Um, but it's it's uh, it's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty in depth. Um, award and that's why they get the medals when they earn it. So um, second step, so first step is get your booklet. Second step is parents should review the program outline. So each faith organization's books, each medal from each different uh, faith organization has different requirements. So sometimes the family can do to be the counselor, sometimes clergy is required. So the parents, before they start with the scout, should look through the whole book and knew, know what the requirements are. They should always check in with clergy of, at their faith organization, um, just because they're supposed to be under the supervision, supervision of that clergy. And most booklets are we're going to require um, someone, a priest or a pastor of some sort to rabbi, to sign off at the end. So if you've gone to them in the beginning, you know what their feelings are about it, that you're going to be able to go to them at the end or ask for support during the process. Um, that is um, always a good thing. Step three is that families should talk to their religious leaders. So the parents, so that we've gotten the book, uh, parents have reviewed the book, parents and scouts should go talk to their religious leader and let them know that they're starting work on this. Um, let them know that they're going to be asking for their um, signature and support. Um, and also for the, the younger scouts, for the Cub Scouts, 
the medal when earned should be presented in a ceremony at their um, at their faith organization, at their church, at their um, you know wherever they go for their faith. So um, you can definitely want to present or at least acknowledge this at uh, an award ceremony at the PAC, um, you know, at a blue and gold or at any other award ceremony. This would be up there along the lines of like a supernova. Um, so it's a big, you know, it's a big thing. Um, so it should be acknowledged at a PAC meeting award ceremony, but the presentation be, should be at their um, religious organization. Okay, so step four is finish the booklet, do the requirements, right? So they work through it, however long it takes, it should get done um, within those, uh, those age groups. So for example, if they're working on the Parvuli day, they have from the beginning of bears till the end of area of lights before they cross over. So before they cross over, if they haven't finished, that's it. They can't, they can't finish it. Um, again, three to six months, pretty big deal. Um, these emblems are not available from the council store. These are available only from the faith organizations. So uh, they need to, the parents would need to contact the faith organization. I know for the Catholic Awards, the National Committee on Scouting um, through the diocese in Springfield uh, issues the awards. So the application at the end of the book needs to go to the fourth faith organization, and then the awards will be mailed um, to either the, the parent or the counselor who is working with the scout. Um, like I said, awards can be presented anytime. Scout Sunday, Sabbath, um, Sunday, uh, Scout Sabbath are really good times to be able to do that, but it can be anytime. Um, so my challenge to you as uh, scouters is to talk to your units, um, to the packs that you're involved with, to the parents, to the scouts. Um, to let them know and make sure that they're aware. You're not going to get everybody interested, but my um, my goal is just to make sure that all scouts are aware of religious emblems. Um, I know my girls, my daughter went through um, Girl Scouting, and she went from daisies to senior, um, and we didn't know until she was in middle school that these even existed. So that's my goal is that all scouts are aware that they exist and that it can be a big part of your scouting experience to participate in um, religious activities. Um, so I'll make sure that Ellie has the, um, the, the presentation that has my contact information in it. Um, now you could go, if anybody's involved in a pack, if you do a presentation, um, what I've just done here, um, I've also done for the pack itself. And when the scouts listen to this presentation, they are um, able to earn a puzzle patch that is presented by the Prey, um, Prey organization, P-R-A-Y. Um, and uh, each year there's four patches. It comes in a diamond, there are four diamonds and they all fit together. There's an anchor patch with a scout kneeling and then an eagle and um, the fish and the, the mountain. Um, and each year they get a different patch and it makes this ginormous combination of puzzles of, of patches. Those can be worn um, at, as any other temporary patch on their uniform. Um, and as an adult, as a scouter, you, after presenting to a group, this program that I just talked through of religious emblems, patches, and adventures, um, can also earn that patch. So they can be ordered from uh, PrayPub, PrayPub.org. So, Kathy, Kathy, we just have just over a minute left, just to I'm be aware. ready to say, thank you. Um, <laughs> any questions? I rushed through it, I know. <laughs> Um, just try to get the highlights, not knowing where everybody stands on what they already know and what they don't. So, um, any questions? Kathy, are you the presenter for this area? I am the AT District Religious Emblems Coordinator. 
So I can, I don't know if the other districts have religious emblems coordinators. Um, so I can present if you wanted me to present um, to a group virtually, I am happy to do so. So basically, and I, first of all, I apologize. This, this presentation I've had for a few years and I think I corrected, like I got, you know, Boy Scouts out, BSA Scouts, girls, boys, you know, when they reference as boys. So forgive me if I miss something, okay? Um, but basically the Religious Emblem Program is, um, how do I say this is, I mean, the Religious Emblem Program, a lot of us is the not awards is what I guess as leaders we look at. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, to your scouts, it would be the PRAY Program. Okay. And the one thing the PRAY program does is, as we know, a scout is reverend, and, and this program helps to get them um, you know, to meet that, that requirement that, you know, they, in the oath, in the law, that they, you know, duty to God and so forth. So, um, you know, um, is he, again, a scout is reverend, you know, he is, he or she, sorry about that, is faithful in his religious duties and aspect, and, and respects the convictions of others in matters of custom religion. Um, part of the other, over, and an overview, uh, it encourages members to grow stronger in their faith uh, in religious groups. BSA has approved um, these programs, even though um, you won't find it in the Scout Handbook unless it's changed. I noticed recently on the Cub Scout side of things, because uh, I just happened to be working with a, a patrol, the AOL patrol, the crossover. So I was with those requirements <clears throat> recently as I was reading through the book because a lot of changes I did any legal stuff. So I see that the pray program or religious emblem, you know, awards is some of the requirements. So, um, so that may have changed a little bit over the years. So it's good if it's in the part of your program, that's what the pray is. And we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so some of the awards it's pray. There's all kinds of, um, awards and it's all based on their faith or religion. So a couple of these, ch this chart here basically is just showing you, excuse me, it's just showing, you know, Cub Scouts, you know, you can, you can see the different awards or, or faiths, I'm sorry, in the column and, you know, Cub Scouts, we below, um, BS1, BS2 is their nomenclature in this document, it basically means um, the younger youth in the Scout BSA program or the older youth um, and an adult. So basically they can get award. There's a mentor program in the PREY that um, so adults or leaders, you know, parents can also take the program with their Scout and can actually get a, an award as, as well. So again, you know, as you see going down the list, um, you know, there's plenty of faiths to work off of. And I can tell you in our troop, um, a lot of the kids gravitate towards the Protestant faith um, reward award simply because as the Catholic scouts tell me, it's a lot easier. <laughs> so um, so I even, uh, I have, like I said, I have some Catholic scouts that, that, you know, go to, that take the Protestant one just because they want to. So my point is your scout can take any religious emblem they would like. Um, as long as that particular uh, faith allows it. So, um, so again, you know, some of the notes, like I would say at the bottom here, BS1 that there's in this presentation is just, it's younger scouts. BSA2 is the older scout in the BSA program. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit in a minute. So a lot of the questions that seem to come up when I've done uh, the program or I talk to, you know, families about the program, um, you know, what if I have a unit that has uh, many faiths, you know, and, you know, and how do you include those emblems in your program for your unit? And basically the, the program is presented as an optional program for scouts. And that's what I was you know, leaning back before. You don't see a lot of it in the handbooks and stuff. And it's really not part of your troop meetings. And, you know, it's kind of like the merit badge program, right? The merit badge stuff happens over here. <laughs> Troops are core, but these satellite programs are happening off. Um, and that's what the, that's what the prey is. Um, it's an optional program for the scouts. Um, usually uh, the instruction is coming from your 
uh, a denomination that you're working with, okay? And it's usually not a unit leader. In the past, they, there is a position in um, our district. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Uh, Pam. Um, Kosnicki. That's it, Kosnicki. I'm, I'm saying, I'm, in my brain, I'm saying K. You know, I know it's Mrs. K is what the scouts call her. So. Um, but um, I think she's our religious emblem coordinator, if that's correct. And then if the ideal thing is to have someone, a parent or what have you, in your unit um or maybe just um it could be maybe some of your organization what that would be willing to be like a unit a religious emblem um unit coordinator and this person would coordinate um sign ups and all that stuff and the materials and stuff that you need for a class and promote it for you um and it's important that parents are, in, are, are informed about these programs okay and and the information um that's available for their particular faith. Um, question I used to get all the time, do boys and girls participate in the same program? The question is it depends on the religion, okay? So I know that sounds funny, the Latter-day Saints, um, you know, the answer would most likely be no, I think, if I'm not mistaken, because it's part of the, the Boy Scout or the Scout BSA program, and um, that's for, for boys only. So, um, so it depends on the faith. And, but it's good to check that um, before you let them know. Um, do the youth have to belong to a religious institution? They have to go to church, basically. And the answer to that is, again, it depends on religion. Um, most, at least like the Protestant faith, the answer is no. Um, but again, each, each uh, faith or award is a little different. So again, you should check to make sure. For example, the Catholic uh, emblem award that's actually done um, that's not done at unit level um, that's done at their level um, now I'm drawing a blank on that too um, um, how that works got it so well, one second so that you, you know the diocese diocese there you go yeah so the diocese, the diocese thank you yep so that's done at th that that level they do that themselves they usually they provide all the material they you know, the whole nine yards. So if you have a scout that um, wants the Catholic Religious Emblem Award, then you'd have to, you know, go through their church. And then I'm assuming their church, you know, would get them to the right contact, okay? Actually, George, yep. um, just met with the Catholic Committee uh, this week, um, and they are actually forming a new class. Um, it's going to rotate between a couple of different Catholic um, institutions uh, down here toward uh, uh, you know this this part of the the council. It's going to be in West Springfield, Springfield, Westfield, um, you know that area. Um, and it's going to classes are starting now in December, and they're going to go through September. Um, to be awarded next year. I was trying to cut and paste it into the <laughs> chat, but I yeah. can't, I don't seem to have the ability to do that. It's blocking me. And I see I have a question from an SPL. Um, so go ahead, what's our question? Or maybe we don't. Um, what if none of the scouts in your troop are part of an organized religion? Right. So if they're not part, like, like I was you know, starting to say, if you're not part of an organized religion, that's, that's okay. Um, it, de it really depends on, on that, on the, re how I said, the religion or the, re the award that you want to work towards. So for example, I am pretty sure on the Catholic Emblem Award, they probably wouldn't let you take that award based on the fact that you're not practicing Catholicism. So um, and each award is a little different. When I say that, uh, when I took a few years back on the, for example, the Catholic one, um, in the PREY program, and we'll get to this in a minute, is broken down to four, basically four grades, okay? So it uh, used to be, and may, it may still be that, like for the Catholic one, you can't just jump into the third part, which is like grade six and eight, I think it's, you have to start at grades one and two and and complete the other two before you can start the third which makes it kind of difficult when you're you know a sixth grader taking a you know kindergarten first grade type material so um 
Whereas, you know, the Protestant, when I say Protestant faith, well, for the most part, that's Episcopal, Congregationalist, United Church of Christ, Methodist, um, Baptist, and there's a slew of different Baptists uh, alone. That, so it's, a, it's pretty broad. When you do the Protestant uh, award, it's a pretty, pretty broad um, uh, base. So that is a little different. I know for a fact, most of those you can jump right in. Okay. And, um, and you can just start off in that class. And like, I know for the Protestant one, you don't have to be practicing. So um, I think there was another question if I'm missing. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, you know, why doesn't my religious institute know, know about religious emblem? That question comes up quite a bit too. Um, really, it, it, it's, 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 it ends up being uh, a, a faith part, I mean, the religious institution. Um, again, the Catholic one's different because they run it themselves, but a lot of them, you know, don't. And it comes down to us as a troop, you know, if, if for our scouts to, to bring it to um, their attention. As, you know, um, the program, it, it is a national program. Pray is, you know, BSA endorses or supports the Pray program. It is not a BSA program program two different things um so with um with that with with that said anybody can take the class it's not just scout class so um in the past when i used to do the you know when we do the pray program in our community it's you know yes it's the troop it's it's the pack um, um yes girl scouts um is, you know they're welcome to join siblings are welcome to join um you know anyone can participate it's a great way to grow um or recruit for your for your pack or troop as well i mean i actually that actually happened um a few years back i actually put the scout up through the play program so um how long is the program complete well it depends on the program and we'll get that in a second um, but basically it's three to four months or longer Depends on how you want to do it. You want to do a class every week. You want to do a class once a month. Uh, the recent one, I got roped into teaching the Family and God program. And that was five months because we did one meeting a month. And so it dragged out for five months. I've done it other ways when we've done one a week and we banged it out in about two months. So it um, really comes down to what works for you and your counselor. Um, who could be a counselor? Well, Again, it's up to the, the religious institution you're working with. In my case, you know, with the Protestant one here in our community, you know, I, I taught one class. Where it's not that complicated. You, know, you get workbooks and material. It was easy. It was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, usually I try to get the lay, you know, personnel from the religious institution that you're, you're trying to work with, with the scouts. So, you know, for me, it's, you know, I'm... My wife's a minister, so that's easy. She gets roped into one of them, you know. Um, actually, you know, over in Munson, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Pastor Peter um, did some, did one for me this year. So I try to reach out to, you know, other religious institutions around me to uh, make that work. But if you can't, pretty much, you know, at this point, you know, I try to find someone that can willing to, to te look over the material and, and to teach a class. Um, How's the emblem presented is basically the word and your scout gets done with everything. Um, our, 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 like the cath our district, right? Our council has a, a um, what do you call it? An award ceremony. I think it happens in May. Um, November. November. Is that what it was? November. I had, I know the Catholics, um, I have patches for last year. It didn't happen uh, in the past. It used to be held in Palmer. It's once a year. Basically, you know, we try to get all the kids that are in the program, they come, they, you know, may present their project, or the, you know, because each level is a different thing that they do. But um, they would get their awards um, based on um, the, the uh, you know, the faith that they, they did. So um, it completed. However, uh, our, at least what I do is, because Scout Sunday is always the first Sunday in February. So um, if we have kids in the program, we try to get them to wrap that up. Um, and we actually try to present their religious emblem award along at the scout 
Sunday service. So that's just what we do. But, um, you know, it's really up to you and, and how you want to present that. So real quick, you know, we have a couple of awards the kids are working on. Remember I said the PREY program ha is, is, an, is support or endorsed by BSA, but it's not a BSA program. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are patches that the kids earn. Um, they can get a medal for their uniform um, once they completed their religious uh, award. On the BSA, BSA side of things, are um, you get what you call the, the knot awards, right? The square knots that you see on a lot of our uniforms. So what's unique about the knot, and this is one of the ways I get, believe it or not, um, I get the, the scouts to, to buy into the program a little bit that are hesitant, is that this is the only square knot that your youth can wear in a uniform right i don't you know so when they see mr adams in his uniform and he's got knots and they're always asking what are the knots what does this mean you know this is you know and we go through the whole story and i always tell them if you want one well this is what you got to do right so this is you know a way to i think especially the older scouts at least in our in the troop side of things they wear them with pride and um it definitely helped enrollment in the program. Um, and it makes them feel part of the adult leadership too. So, um, and then adults, same thing. We get a different knot that goes on our uniform if we take the class um, and complete as a mentor. And if I'm not mistaken, I think if you earn the knot too as a youth, I think it does cross over onto your adult uniform. I'd have to look that up, but and then there's additional levels on, that's what the pins are for, um, for representing a program can be worn on the same knot. So um, so that's the knot part of it. That's for the BSA portion. Um, and, oh, here it is. And if you earn the religious knot as a youth and then was awarded the religious knot as an adult, which you're not gonna wear, you can wear both knots. So that's the answer to the, my own question. Um, the religious square knot is only a few square knots that can be earned as a youth, right? And worn as an adult. So, um, skip through some of this. Parents, you know, review guidelines. Families should talk to the religious leaders and show them the book before beginning the program. Some, I've had scouts in the past that um, have taken the program. Like uh, I had a, a scout that was, um, I think it was Jewish a few years back, practicing. And so he worked through his synagogue and got it on his own. I got him the materials and stuff. And just basically worked on his own. And once they completed his, let me know so I can make sure he can get the knot and stuff. So um, again, I'm gonna skip. basically Troop 7's done it for the last six years. We work with the Congregational Church. Um, I don't know why that is, but I'm sorry. The, um, so basically, you know, the program or the pray program is, with the troop is ages, you know, I say this, it's ages, ages six to 18 is the program. We've done it for six years. It's four parts to it. God and me, which is grades one and three. God and family, which is grades four and five. God in church, which is basically your middle school. And God in life is your high school. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to get into all of it. Um, but basically, each level is geared towards their age. I just finished God and family teaching it. Where the kids make a pizza. Um, I basically, with the material, I didn't go exactly um, letter for letter in the workbook. So you get a workbook for an, for an instructor with all the answers, and then the kids have their actual workbook, or an adult mentor has their workbook. Um, but I used a lot of videos and you know, I, you know, the scriptures and stuff, and I kind of broke it down to keep an hour class, and then. There's a whole process. They're building a pizza. It's all about God and family, you know, what it means to be family, God's family, and so forth. And right. And at the end, um, basically, I think in a, next month, we're actually, we're going to actually build a pizza. We're having to build a pizza party with the kids. So, um, but um, again, it's, it's whatever you want to put into it. A little scout flair. That's what I do. And, um, and I find I learned something too in, in these classes that, um, that I sit in with the kids. Um, classes are offered to anyone who wants to attend, like I said before, uh, is what, that's how we do.
Now we're all back. So sorry about that, guys. I know it was rolling off. I was trying to skim through it. Um, there's a lot of material there. But if you want to know more stuff, we'll send you some prey info website and you can check it out. And let me know. I'll be more willing to help you. Thanks, George. Um, I hope the Cub Scout session was as informative as the Scouts BSA Venture Crew and uh, Sea Scouts session was. Want to open it up for a few minutes for um, just any any concerns, anything that um, people want to bring up in a leader forum, things that we should be thinking about as the roundtable team that you'd like to see us address. Hi, Beth. I have a kind of a dumb one. We had a wonderful situation um, Wednesday night. A family showed up with four girls. One covey, three, I mean, just boom, they were in the troop by the end of the night. I Have you done the paperwork yet? Have you, you know, yay. And one of them said, uh, I'd like to volunteer. And I, I have to admit the first thing that flashed through my mind was, oh no, that means for 18 months. At minimum, we can't get the highest tier because it'll take you that long to go through all the training. And I know that's not what we're trying to do, <laughs> but I want to make sure that's been vocalized. I don't want to discourage volunteers, but bringing on new volunteers uh, is a detriment to the trooper, or at least was the last time I looked at that. I've forgotten what it's called now. The JTE? Yeah. Peace. Okay. I would suggest that you work with your unit commissioner uh, to, to go through that and uh, see how they can help you with all of that. Okay. I looked at the uh, JTE requirements just a few minutes uh, earlier today, and it, none of the levels require 100% training. It's close to that, but, you know, <laughs> you they have some uh, leeway for that type of situation. So, um, you know, I, I think... We so maybe the all in for scouting piece that uh, has the higher threshold. Uh -huh. I think that's right. Okay. Anything else? Okay, then seeing nothing else, I'm going to try this. Uh, there we go. We're going to head to our closing. Um, this is something that came out of, this is actually as old as I am. Um, it is something that I stumbled upon and thought in this season, that this would be a, a good thought for us to uh, leave with. So I have adjusted it because it is as old as I am. So uh, you will, you will catch where it's been adjusted. Uh, this is called the Holiday Spirit and the Gimme Pig. There's a strange animal to be found in especially large numbers at this time of the year. It's called a Gimme Pig. You can recognize it very easily. It will be saying something like this. Give me a bicycle. Give me an iPad. Give me a Nintendo Switch. Give me a scooter. Have you ever seen any of these strange animals? Surely you haven't seen any of them in your scout units. No scout could possibly be a guinea pig. A scout is pledged to help other people at all times. They want to give, and that's what they're really thinking about. Real, real scouts never think gimme. They think about the good they can do, the happiness they can bring to somebody else, because as you know, they put other people ahead of themselves. They are thinking about other people, especially at this time of year. What will you give this holiday season? How, how much service to other people? How much happiness to your family? What will you give? This evening, I give you my wishes for a very healthy, happy holiday season and a blessed new year. And we will see you on January 3rd. Have a good night, everyone.